welcome to a special edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. In remembrance of the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision, today Andrew continues his interview with Marjorie Dannenfelser, a courageous political ally in the fight for life. A little over 2,000 children die every day. In this hour, 105 children have died. Wow. And now, here's Andrew. I've started a couple of pregnancy centers in this area, and they all have sonograms. Mm -hmm. And the stats are that when a woman comes in, they don't tell you that you cannot get an abortion, yeah. but they tell you that they believe the best is to choose life. And one of the things that they do is show a sonogram of that child, and you would probably know the exact statistics on, on the percentage that once they see the sonogram, yeah, I forget I what know, it was, yeah. but it's huge. It's it like is. 70, 80, 90 yeah. percent. Once they see the That's child right. and it's no longer something they can't see, all of a sudden mm -hmm. they decide to give birth to it's that child. It's not theoretical anymore, and that has really changed society. It's why um, the, the pro-lifers are younger and younger now because, you know, they saw their little brother on the, on the refrigerator um, long before he was born. They had a name yeah. for him. Um, and it doesn't change just because uh, your idea of that person changes. Let me give some statistics here. In 1973, when they started the abortion through Roe versus Wade, there were 615,831 abortions. 1990, there was 1,429,247 abortions. 2005, it had dropped nearly in half to 820,000. And uh, that's because of the things you're talking about, mm, these sonograms, right. these other centers, mm. and uh, the pro-life movement, which that's you've been right. a part of for 25 mm. years. And abortion rates are dropping because of education. And once people see that it's a child and it's, you know, it's just a lie. It's a lie that people are saying that this is my own body and I have right over, they got their own DNA. Mm. They got their own heartbeat. Mm -hmm. It is a separate human being. An appendectomy, legitimate argument. Tonsillitis, <laughs> legitimate argument. Baby there, not. There are two right. people, both need love. And I, I'm, I'm constantly amazed at the uh, at how the, the feminist movement began with suffragists. They were the ones who got women in, involved in politics in the first place. They were all pro-life. Susan B. Anthony said, the act will burden her conscience in life, it'll burden her soul in the grave, but thrice guilty is the one who drove her to the dreadful deed, the people who pressured her into doing that horrible thing that she recoils against, that invisible knowledge that she has. And uh, Alice Paul, the original author of the Equal Rights Amendment, called, it, called abortion the ultimate exploitation of women. Absolutely. These were strong women who led women into politics. And then something crazy happened in the 1960s and everything changed. And now, somehow, our rights have to be built on the broken rights of other human beings. Yeah. It is clearly well, A question I've evil. always had is, what about the women that are being aborted? That's right. That's I right. suppose close to 50% of the people That's aborted right. are women. And what about their rights? That it's not only in other countries. And I mean, in, in terms of intent, even intending to kill the, the unborn child, if they know it's a woman, happens in other countries. But it also happens in certain um, populations in our own country. And there's been, there have been efforts to stop that. There are discrimination abortion laws. You can't abort a child if it's got downs. You can't abort it if it's a, a girl or, or based on... Now, go back a mm -hmm. second, because yeah. I've heard testimonies. We've mm -hmm. actually got a video of people who their child out of 21 markers had 20 markers that it was Down syndrome, mm -hmm. and the doctors told her to abort. Mm -hmm. And she chose to believe, and the child is perfect. Isn't that amazing? But you were saying that there are laws now that you can't abort because of Down syndrome? Well, in Indiana, uh, Governor Pence signed the uh, uh, anti-discrimination law relating to abortion, and it was that. It's based on disability. You can't be aborted based on disability um, or or um, race or sex. Now, is this only? And it's not, on, unfortunately, it's not enforced because it was immediately challenged, of course, by the other side. It's making its way to the Supreme Court. It could be the one to overturn Roe versus Wade. There's several that could be, but that could be one too. This is the reason that the Supreme Court justices that <laughs> Trump is appointing is so important because yeah, in, the, in the past, the Supreme Court would have ruled against Life. That's right. I know. I and mean, now really... we don't know for sure what's going to happen, but at least we've got people who say that they will uphold the Constitution. Well, Roe versus Wade week is the week to be thinking about this, that, that the world is changing right before our very eyes. 
Um, depends on when that case gets there, but there's a springtime of life coming, and uh, and we we're getting ready. And we also have the heartbeat bill, mm -hmm. That's and right. uh, that was passed where? That was in Iowa, signed by fantastic Governor Reynolds. Um, she is a just a beautiful advocate for life. That, without question, will be is is already challenged. It could make its way as well. And we're, so, what is the heartbeat bill? The heartbeat bill um, basically makes abortion um, illegal at six weeks around the time that if, if a heartbeat is detectable, then abortion can occur. I so heard that's the earliest. I heard it explained this way, that yeah. if you determine death by the heart stopping beating, mm -hmm. well then life begins when it starts. Yeah. And so yeah. they, it, once you detect a, yeah. a heartbeat in the child, yeah. you cannot abort. So the court, one of the things that they're looking for and that there is a precedent for is, uh, is, is there um, the, the, the state's interest in preserving life. They, that's supposed to be balanced by a, not having an undue burden, keeping a woman from having an abortion because of Roe versus Wade. Those two things are in the balance no matter what comes to the court. So the question will be, yeah, that seems to be pretty obviously indicating life, a heartbeat. So that's a good choice to choose heartbeat. The question will be, is it an undue burden to at six weeks? I mean, these are the court's words, not mine, on a woman's right to have an abortion at that point. So the question will be, will the court be willing to be that aggressive or not? Um, we'll find out. It depends on who's on the court at that point. <laughs> I mean, if we and um, and it also uh, you know, in some, so it could be that, it could be 18 weeks, it could be any, any, could be anything, but it really does take a court that's willing to listen to it. And that is due to a lot of factors that aren't obvious sometimes. Like it's popular. That bill's popular. It's being passed everywhere. You know, well, Marjorie, let me ask you this. You at one time were pro-choice. Mm -hmm. And if somebody would have come to you saying if a heartbeat, the lack of heartbeat determines death and heartbeat determines life, how would you have responded to that? What, how would you have looked at that? I would have said, which I did, um, humanity is far more than just a beating heart. There, a, a human being can't be boiled down to just a beating heart. That's a simplistic way of looking at it. Now, I would have said that. Now, now, obviously, I don't believe that. I think there are a lot of unsaid things. There's no question that at conception, it's a, hum it's a human. There's nothing else it could be called. Um, so, Let me use some other scriptures here. You know, we've already used Psalms 139. Of course, I know not everybody watches this program every day, but Psalms 139 talks about God knew us and wrote all of the things in His book before we were even born. Jeremiah 1, 4 through 5, talked about that God knew Jeremiah and ordained him to be a prophet while he was still in his mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Galatians 1, 15, Paul said, But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace to reveal Christ in me. So Paul talked about that he had a purpose from birth and then there's just these other scriptures. One I want to read here is Luke 1, 41. It says, And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And Elizabeth went on to say, For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Wow. Doesn't so, it give me, it gives me um, goosebumps. So this was yeah. six months into mm. Elizabeth's pregnancy, and the yeah. baby had joy at mm. six months, what the world would call a fetus, which they say is not a person. But here is a scriptural account of a six-month-old baby in the womb having joy and leaping for joy at the sound of Mary's voice. Could there possibly be a more direct lesson from the Lord Himself? that he and his cousin were interacting when they were still in the womb. Isn't that awesome? Both of them had these uh, these purposes. And also about the crisis pregnancy of the mother of our Lord and how she handled it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was looked at as an adulteress. People yeah. didn't understand. And yet, man, uh, they, they would have aborted Jesus yeah. if yeah. they would have had those standards That's in those right. days. That's right. I know. Uh, there, uh, there, that, what you just read, couldn't be a more... Um, uh, a more compelling lesson to the world about what about what this is. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord Himself, then how can you look at that and think anything yeah. anything else? Isn't it? It, it isn't just He that yeah. was human at that point. So Marjorie and I are saying to those of you who say that you know the Lord and that you love the Lord, here are scripture references. We've given you five or six here of 
God knowing people, calling them, anointing them while they're in their mother's womb. And we have the example of John the Baptist leaping for joy in his mother's womb. If you have any commitment to the Word of God at all, regardless of where you're coming from, regardless of what you've been taught, you cannot say that you believe the Bible and really uh, believe it's inspired by God and still support abortion. And I say that in love. I know that this is making some of you mad, but Galatians 4, 16 says, Have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. I tell you, this is the truth. And Marjorie and I are on this program trying to tell you that this anniversary of Roe versus Wade, it's been what? Now, 45 years ago, over 60 million children killed. Christians have to stand up. Christians need to have an opinion on this issue, and we need to speak it. And we don't need to be ashamed like we're the ones that are weird. It's the ones that are <laughs> killing their own children that are That's weird. Right. We are in, weird. It's written in everybody's hearts. Uh, what it's it resonates with with everyone. Um, if not in the moment, it, it'll it'll come without question, and we'll all know in the end. It always strikes me that that Norma Norma McCorvey, the woman who um, Roe versus Wade, she is the she is the mm-hmm. Jane Roe mm-hmm. in Roe versus Wade how that burden um, on her heart that she had for all those years, she said before the 30th anniversary of Roe versus Wade that she prayed that the world never saw the, that anniversary of the 30th anniversary, the 30th of Roe, um, and how she regretted. She repented over and over. She only had to repent once, of course, but yeah. she repented over and over. And she was pretty much coerced into doing this. She was. So. Sounds very familiar. Mm-hmm. She was coerced into saying Kinda that she like was Dr. raped. Dr. Ford uh, being forced into this position. I would say that the leftist feminists of our country um, have a track record of... Abusing um, women. Of <laughs> pressuring women into doing something for the good of all. Like, it might not be true, but it's going to be good for everybody. That's when you know you're in trouble. It might not be true, but the ends justify the means. That's right. That's An ungodly act will cause a godly result. That just never works that never way. Works. The root's bad, the fruit's bad. That's right. And so we mentioned these heartbeat bill and the other one about uh, you can't abort because of uh, some kind of a birth defect or something, and they're making their way to the Senate. Uh, what would happen? If the if these things make their way to the um, not the Senate but the, the Supreme court. court, yeah, if they make their way to the Supreme Court, and if the Supreme Court was to rule in favor mm-hmm. of either one of these things, what would happen to Roe versus It's Wade? really important that the country be discussing this, and certainly believers. The thing that would happen first is that the right to legislate about abortion would be given back to the states. Um, and Can you explain that, why they don't have the right to legislate? They, because of Roe versus Wade, um, they don't. No, so the no Supreme state, Court trumped the all state, state rights? Laws, all state laws that were even wiped sound off constitutional. the books in one day. It's, that's been an argument, of course, the Fifth Amendment. Um, in one day, um, all of those laws were wiped off the books um, and told that they couldn't do it. So, so there are these tests, of course, that um, that are applied to any state law, and those tests have meant that you basically cannot save a child's life up until birth in almost every state. Um, so, what would happen? Um, I think it's really good to kind of eliminate some of the fear that kind of com- that comes into people's hearts about about that time. Is that then states would get to the job of doing what they should do, and it could happen on the federal level as well. Whatever the consensus can sustain is what will be law. That's nothing to fear. That's if your democracy. State ha- that's what democracy is. It's one of the beautiful lessons of democracy. This is one of the things that has messed up our country is that they have been legislating from the bench instead yes. of the will of the people. Right. So basically, we have the law of New York and California for the entire country. That's right. Um, I don't know what Colorado will do at that point. It'll probably be in this battleground area, but I do know that places like um, Alabama, Mississippi, Texas, Iowa, um, lots of the Midwest, lots of the South will pass some very human and humane pro-life laws. As it, and I believe at that time, and it's something we're working 
very hard on, and that is communicating to women, making sure they know where they can go, they know what services are available, they know about adoption. It's almost impossible to figure out how to adopt right now. I mean, al almost no one can figure that calculus out. So that's what will happen. Those states will start to pass laws. That's about a third of the states. The next third of the states will say, no way, we're keeping the law as it is, Vermont, California, New York, places like that. And then a third will be the battleground area where where the true work of democracy is just arguing back and forth, figuring out where it'll go. Um, and so those second tiers will take a little bit of time, but the first tier will probably happen in pretty, pretty short order. So if some of the states still performed abortions and others didn't, wouldn't people just go across the state lines and get abortions? They might. I mean, and that will be that will be an issue that we have to it's just exactly like we, we um, did with slavery. You know, um, that was the case then. Um, but I think that, you know, in your case, you were pro-choice, but it's because you hadn't really been presented that's right. with the issues and stuff. Mm -hmm. And if they see, say, for instance, one third of the states are all of a sudden opposing mm -hmm. abortion, I think that this intuitive knowledge that we read about in Romans chapter one, it will be enough to push some people yes, to say right. that, well, this isn't just the law of the land mm -hmm. anymore. And I think they'll look at it differently and it will save lives. I think it'll, it's, it'll be a part of the conversion of this nation that should have happened a long time ago. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have been here, but we are. It'll be a part of the conversion of the nation in more than one way. And, um, and also it will be uh, an ability for the United States to be a beacon to the rest of the world again, as it should, as it, as it should be. But instead we've been exporting abortion to the rest of the world. That's we need right. to be exporting life again. And I don't remember the details, but I have heard statistics that Obama gave lots of money to fund abortion in these That's other right. countries That's and right. actually promoted it. And I do know for certain that when I was in Uganda, Uganda was threatened to lose multiplied millions of U.S. aid if they didn't support abortion, if they didn't support homosexual marriage and mm -hmm. stuff like this. So under these liberal presidents, they have actually been exporting abortion and all of these things. They have been. And one beautiful act that the president um, performed not long after being sworn in was to reinstate what's called the Mexico City policy. It's just named that because it was started in Mexico City by Reagan a long time ago. But this policy has gone back and forth between pro-abortion and pro-life presidents for a while. And, and it basically says you can't, you can't export abortion. You can't use U.S. healthcare dollars to perform or promote abortion in any way. But what this president did is he took that amount of money that this law touches from 600 million to $9 billion because it's not just, because it used to be just reproductive health money. Now it's any, any money at all. And any, any program that has any involvement in abortion whatsoever um, can't receive this money anymore. Now explain this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You're saying from 600 million to nine. Nine billion dollars And so what was money. the six is. The 600 million dollars, the 600 million, it, it mean, means that um, there were, the, the, the law was we can't, any money that the United States um, exports to other countries and, and programs, um, those programs can't perform abortions. And yeah. so, so that affected about $600 million of our budget then. And that meant that, that uh, you know, say $600 million affected, you know, 450 organizations, but nine, $9 billion affects many, many, many times the number so of organizations. So you're saying under previous uh, conservative presidents, there was like $600 million restricted. That right. could, but now, now uh, Trump has billion. expanded it to $9 billion. Yeah, that worth. means nobody's getting any abortion money whatsoever. Awesome. It's an I didn't even know It's that. an enormous change that our friends in other countries who don't want their cultures undermined are thanking us for. Of course, we don't really hear that, but they are. And, you know, how, what, how arrogant of the United States to be exporting our cultural values to undermine their own beautiful values. And I was I was at the uh, Senate or Parliament, whatever they call it, in Uganda, and I met the man who who changed the Ugandan laws against sodomy. Mm -hmm. And what it was, he just basically said that if a teacher sodomizes a young boy, it's the same as uh, as if you were to rape a young girl. He made it equivalent. And the people came out and said that Uganda is wanting to kill homosexuals. Yeah. And they totally blew it out of proportion. 
and stuff. Yeah, and it wasn't great, as they said at all. And it was just that they made it the same uh, punishment as raping a young girl, which happened to be in the Ugandan culture death. Mm -hmm. But they presented it that Uganda is passing laws against all homosexuals and wants to kill all the homosexuals. It was just uh, sodomy rules is what it was. It just goes to show anybody can be taken advantage of if they're not paying attention. It's the same with the Kavanaugh hearings. You know, you can say anything you want. And if, if you're not paying attention, you just believe it. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, a, that's the reason we're making TV programs this week. <laughs> Telling yeah. people about Roe versus Wade. <laughs> That's right. Now, I've, also, let me ask you this. I've read in one of the uh, periodicals that I get that they said in the Roe versus Wade decision, 1973, that it there was a place in there where the justices said this is made on the basis of lack of scientific proof mm -hmm. that a child in the womb is a human being. Yeah. And if you could prove that, then Roe versus Wade is an Un, uh, is void. Right. Now, is that accurate? It is accurate. They they did they thought it was a closed matter, but it's not a closed matter. And since that time, the science is totally on our side. Yeah, that's right. Just like what the scripture is saying right here when Elizabeth said that the babe leapt in my womb for joy. Mm -hmm. They have proven that a child can feel pain mm -hmm. and reacts to pain and stuff. And they the, all of the science now is on the side that a child in the womb is a person. That's right. And so if these heartbeat bill and the other bill makes it to the uh, Supreme Court, and they all of a sudden say, well, yes, this is a person. Roe versus Wade is over. That's right. And so since that time, from what you read, that, you know, while they talk about the precedents uh, being firm, there's no question that Roe versus, the interpretation of Roe versus Wade has changed over time. Really, the whole trimester system is kaput. They don't even use that. They don't even talk about that anymore. And, and they've added the idea that, um, that there is a legitimate state interest in preserving life, whatever that is. And hopefully we'll mm -hmm. figure out what that is. Now it's the viability, the standard. So if, uh, and that's why th that, that is, seems to be ruling the day on the court. Um, so the key is to test Roe versus Wade pre-viability um, because that they haven't said anything about that, but they, the science is on our side. <laughs> and we know that, that, that uh, there are other ways to, pr the idea of pain, the idea of a heartbeat, there are all sorts of indications of humanity pre-viability. Just the idea that we can't breathe on our own doesn't prove a whole lot. Well, plus, viability has changed with the medical procedures. Right. They can now deliver a child at what, four, five months, six months, or five I'm not. Five months, pretty much, and, five months. And they can right. live. Yeah, vi the idea of viability, the, the, uh, the date of viability has changed, um, has changed a month for every decade since Roe versus Wade. So, so that shifting standard can't be a basis of judicial, a, a hard rock judicial standard when it shifts, you know, as science changes. And to me, that's not even a good standard because yeah. a baby, nine months, full term, mm -hmm. is, isn't viable if you don't feed it, that's if you don't right. take care <laughs> of it. Right. It can't take care of itself. Oh, that's it might right. be able to breathe on its own, but it won't live very long if you don't oh, take care yeah. of it. And as you said, it's got everything it needs from the moment that um, of conception. Everything it needs, it's all set. All it needs is a little bit of patience. So I think that this is the reason that the left is so incensed and that we saw the resistance to these Supreme Court nominations because they see this. Mm -hmm. they, they are well aware of what yeah. the potential of this is. And to them, to Lou Roe Ro Ro mm -hmm. versus Wade is just like a house of cards crumbling. Mm -hmm. They could see all oh, of their yeah. liberal agenda going by the wayside. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. The majority in cases from Texas and Georgia said that the decision to end a pregnancy during the first three months belongs to the woman and her doctor, not the government. Before he formed me and my mother's womb, he knew me before I was born. He sanctified me. We held these truths to be self-evident. That all men are the creative people. They all adult by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That monkeys are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Remember, it's my choice. It's God's choice. It's a baby choice. It's our choice. Not yours. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life! You're so tiny.
I hope that you've enjoyed these programs with Marjorie. I tell you, it was powerful. And we are offering you some resources. On this little USB right here, we have uh, three interviews with two of the women are abortion survivors. One was a saline abortion that caused disfigurement and physical problems. The other one uh, is a woman that survived an abortion. And then we also have an interview of a woman whose daughter died during an abortion. This is gonna be a great resource for you. And then we have this as our free gift to you that has scriptures in there that we used against abortion and also a lot of statistics. So all of this will be a blessing to you. I encourage you to get these products and to share the good news about how we are coming to an end of Roe versus Wade in the United States. Today, you viewed a portion of Andrew's interview with Marjorie Dan and Felser. The interview in its entirety is available on a special Choose Life USB flash drive. Also included on this flash drive, you'll find several more interviews and testimonies relating to abortion. This Choose Life USB flash drive will be accompanied by the Observing All Things booklet that contains many statistics and scriptures with regard to abortion and other social issues. You can get these valuable resources today for a gift of just $20 or more. Also, Andrew would like to offer you the Observing All Things booklet absolutely free. Go to awmi.net to receive this free offer today. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. If the lines are busy, remember you can order ministry materials or become a Grace Partner 24 hours a day, seven days a week at awmi.net. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. For over 25 years, Andrew Womack has been involved with and supported our Colorado Springs Pregnancy Center and has seen the lives of many thousands of babies spared. Presently in outreach of Life Network, the Pregnancy Center offers several valuable services, ranging from free pregnancy tests to personal counseling classes covering pregnancy to infant care, and supplies spanning from maternity wear to diapers and baby clothing. They also offer post-abortion counseling, which ministers to women who have already experienced the heartache of abortion. Andrew has since retired from the board of directors, but continues to support the Colorado Springs Pregnancy Centers. If you'd like more information, please visit elifenetwork.com or cspregnancycenter.com. I'd like to give you a special invitation to join me on April the 12th and the 13th for our David musical. I tell you, this is powerful. We had one performance of it at our dedication back in the month of November. It was spectacular. We are gonna have two performances on the 12th and then again on the 13th of April. I know that Christian and musicals don't usually go together, but this is top drawer. It will minister to you, and it's a great way to share the gospel with some people that might not come to something else. It's gonna be at our facility in Woodland Park, Colorado, April the 12th and 13th. Check it out, The David Musical. You can go to awmi.net for more information. I'd like to encourage you to check out Gospel Truth TV. You can have access to my teaching and a lot of our friends 24-7. It'll be a blessing.